Hi guys, John here from Canadian Marine Guy, and I have here a 1973-85 Horse Johnson V4. Um, I parked it up a couple years ago, and I noticed when I did, it wasn't pumping very much water. And went to put it on this particular boat the other day, went to start it up, and noticed there was no water coming out of it. So, that means it's a good time to get in there and replace the water pump impeller. So I'm going to show you guys today how to drop the lower unit. Um, rebuild the new impeller and water pump and put it back on there so stay tuned so now we're inside the engine the first thing we're going to do is disconnect the shifter linkage so what I did is I removed this bolt here this is a 5 8 bolt it goes in through these two little bars right here and into the block. So you've got your shifter linkage there, pin goes through, this locks onto there, and then when you tighten it down, it'll push it all together. And then once you get this bolt right out of here, then you'll be able to just kind of separate it. You can just kind of grab this one, pull it out, and it'll just come apart. And then you can kind of lift it up and out of the way, then it doesn't cause us any grief down the road. So now we're down at the lower unit. There's a few bolts we're going to have to take out down here in order to disconnect that lower unit. So uh, we've got four bolts, two here on this side, two on the other side. Just take them, just loosen them for now. I wouldn't take them all the way out quite yet. Okay, so now we're underneath here, just above the propeller. Uh, we're going to have to remove this plate right up in here. I don't know the name of that part but I know we got to use a 7 16 socket to take that off of there because there's another bolt just up underneath it. So we're going to loosen that, take it right off of here. Now using a half inch socket with an extension, I'm going to get up inside of here and remove this bolt right here. And now using a 5 8 socket, I'm going to remove this big bolt underneath here. Okay, so now we've got those off. All we've got to do is remove these bolts the rest of the way and the unit should drop down for us. If it doesn't, you can always get a rubber mallet and just give it a quick little tap. But, you know, nine times out of 10, it'll drop down for you, so. Now to get this out, I'm simply just gonna pull down with light pressure and just kind of let it slide out of there. Now if I had an electric trim motor, I would have trimmed this all the way up and it would have made getting it out super easy. You could just pull it right out. I don't, I have a manual one, so I'm just gonna kind of lift it with one hand pull it with my other and it'll come right out of there now to remove the water pump impeller unit uh, we're simply going to remove these four bolts here now to get it off of here we're simply just going to slide it up on the top of this shaft here we had an o-ring i took it off already so you just slide that up and off slide the impeller unit off there's the impeller, and I can already tell it's in terrible, terrible shape. We'll take a quick look at it in a minute here. And then this plate can come off of here too. Sometimes this gets stuck on here. I'm pretty lucky mine didn't. So yeah, taking a look at this impeller, I mean, it's totally shot. You can see it's all melted off on the edges and even down inside of the bowl here. It's all melted on the outside, or the housing, sorry. And I mean, even the cap too. So it's definitely time. Okay, so upon getting your new kit, it's going to come with a couple of things. It's going to come with an impeller. It's going to come with your housing insert, your sidewall and the base. Also going to come with a base plate. Going to come with the housing itself. Going to come with the gasket for your housing. Going to come with the bolts and screws that we need. Also going to come with a little key, an O-ring for your drive shaft and it's gonna come with your tube rubbers as well. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is get the bearing into this plate. We're gonna reuse the same, or the bracket, sorry. We're gonna reuse the same bracket that came on the old one. What I did is I removed the old bearing. There's a bearing that sits in here. All I did is I heated it up a little bit. I got a flat head and I just pried it out of there and then I cleaned it up real nice with a wire wheel. And then when I put the new one in, you can see it there. You can see how the open end is what wants to go upwards and to get that in i just used a rubber mallet and whacked it in there so once you've got that bearing done and ready to go we're going to take our housing 
and we're going to put in our base plate. There's a little notch on it or a little piece sticking out, a little tab, and that wants to go on the insert inside of your housing. So I'm just gonna drop that in there till it locks in and it's locked. And then you can see on there, there's some little grooves right there on the side. Our, this part of this ring is gonna go into those grooves. So you just gotta pinch it down a little bit and then drop it in there. Okay, there we have it. So that's that in there. And next up, we're gonna get our impeller inside of it. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is install all of our gaskets. So on our housing, we're gonna wanna put these little tubes into the holes here. This will seal between your plate and your housing. And then we wanna put this gasket over top of your plate, the piece that's sticking out, it wants to go over top of there and you want the um, thick part to be on the bottom. So I just kind of start it in one place, wrap it around and then just force it on there. And there we have it. Next up, we're gonna put our gasket on our housing. That just slots in around and now we're ready to put it on our lower unit. So the first thing we're gonna put on our lower unit is the base plate. I'm just gonna slip that on there. I cleaned off the top of here a little bit with a wire wheel and I'm just gonna let that sit on there. This is a gasketless base plate so we don't gotta worry about any gaskets or anything like that. Next up, I'm gonna put my key in there in the keyway. There's a little keyway right there. And then we're going to install our impeller here, our housing and the impeller. So I'm just gonna slide it onto the shaft. These aren't perfectly lined up, the impeller and the housing. So I'm just gonna try my best to kind of wiggle it on. Now we're gonna to try to line our key up in there. So now one of the most frustrating parts of this job I found is trying to get the impeller lined up with the key and push it on there without that key popping out of there. So what we've kind of done is laid this thing on its side first of all, and then we put the key in, we slid this on, and then we kind of just turn the shaft and turn the impeller with a flashlight to try to get it to where we need it. Pushed it so it's part way on the key and then we're essentially just gonna to try to push it right onto that key there. So let's give that a try now and see if it goes on. Might have to give it some taps with a rubber mallet. Be really careful because this housing's plastic and we definitely don't wanna break it. And there we have it. It's now sitting on there, so now we can get our four bolts into the top of here. Now the kit comes with new bolts, so it's recommended that you install those. And then we just got to slide our bracket back down and on, just like that, into place. Put our new screws into it. Just snug them up good. 
Okay, now we're just gonna put our O-ring on our drive shaft just below the spline. There's a little groove and there it sits. Now this motor or the lower unit is ready to be mounted back on the motor. Okay, so installing the lower unit again is pretty much just like taking it off, except when we're putting it back on, we have to try to line the splines up on that drive shaft. So what I did is I put the shifter into gear by pulling up on it, and then we're just gonna push it up in there. It's gonna hit on something. Then you're just gonna turn your prop slightly until it goes up in there as much as you need to. Wiggle it, and up in there she goes. Okay, so once we've got this up and sitting, it should be able to, you should be able to pull it up and it sits up against here. You know, everything's fitting right. That means your gear shifter and your splines on your drive shaft are up inside. You can get these four bolts in. I always put these ones in first and I get them right tight and then I can put the rest of the bolts in. Now, when I'm putting these in, I do it in a cross pattern. So I do this one and then I do the one at the back on that side. Then I do this one and then I do the one at the front on the other side. And then we're basically just putting the bolts back in that we took out before. Uh, once it's all mounted up, we can put our gear shifter back on, put that bolt back in, and you should be ready to go.